Good morning, party people. How's it going? Happy uh, Saturday. And it's uh, 4th of July here in the United States, which is a big Independence Day holiday for us. Usually we do all kinds of firecrackers, barbecues, that kind of thing. Uh, lots of lively things usually happening. Mm. Just got back from a vacation. My wife and I, originally I was supposed to have jury duty this past week. And my wife and I, uh, when, I when the jury duty got canceled, of course, because the whole virus thing, uh, my wife and I were like, ooh, let's just hop in the car and drive up the California coast. And we ended up going up to Malibu, which we'd never been before. It's a little beach town outside of L.A. So really, Dev, do you, what time do you call this? Do you have a lie? I did a, so I did have a lie, and I woke up at 4.30, 4.30, like 7 this morning, which is really late for me. But because I made myself sleep in uh, all the whole vacation, and when I say made myself, it was because we had a one-room hotel room in Malibu. And we didn't have like a wall in between the, the suite kind of thing where you watch TV and the, the bed. And so I, I basically I had to sleep in until my wife was closer to up or else I would go, I'd hop in the car and go places. So I slept in until, because Starbucks wasn't open, all the coffee places weren't open until like 5.30. So I kept forcing myself to sleep in and eventually I got it to where I could sleep in until like 4 or 4.30. So I slept in quite a bit. So yeah, so it was a nice vacation, goofed off, uh, came back and I was like, I, ha I thought I would, normally I come back from vacations and I, I spend some time doing th the getting things done process, GTD, and <laughs> getting that bad, <laughs> I gotta, now I got to remember where all my buttons are um, to push the right buttons. No, like, you know, normally when I go on a wake vacation, I go and do a planning retreat kind of thing. I use the getting things done uh, parentheses. Yeah, uh, fam, I, Dave, I totally do. If you go to brentozar.com, click blog up at the top, and then click home office. So it's under the home office category, which is probably under professional development. I've got detailed lists of everything, um, the audio gear that I use, the cameras, all that stuff. Uh, so are you using the browser? Uh, Andy, yes, uh, and it is uh, uh, Luftgekult, which means Luftgekult, which means air cooled. It's a big uh, Porsche 911 and 356 uh, like celebration owners club kind of thing. Oh, thanks for putting the link in there, uh, Sir Lady. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. Mm. And so it's a like once a year ballpark. They get together and they do a, a bunch of Porsches in a parking lot somewhere. Uh, except it's usually a lot more high class than a parking lot. Um, it was, oh, that's true. Oh, you know, it depends on whether he's, which one he's in. So certainly, Dev, it, some of, I have it in different places, depending on where people are watching it, YouTube. Um, uh, they could be watching it on my site. If you go to brenozar.com, I embed the stream there too. So yeah, but it's, that's uh, got my whole rundown. And I try to be really transparent about, too. oh, I have a great video in that category, too, talking about the differences in microphone quality and all. I do a comparison between a Logitech Brio webcam, a Jabra Evolve headset, and some other stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, you would think so, but with the, the embedding on the site. Good morning, guys and gals. Yay. So I, normally I, I go and do my getting things done philosophy. I go um, uh, like plan out what I'm going to do over the next three to six months. And I'm really interested in uh, like planning out what I do so that I can kind of check off epic life quest tasks as I go and get bigger and bigger. I should show that for a second <laughs> just to show you what I mean by that. I'll go pop open the browser and go to ozar.me. This is a personal blog where I don't update it quite as often. Like it's every few months usually. It used to be every Tuesday. But um, hi, welcome back, Jim. But up there on my life quest, this is where I write out the stuff that I'm working on next or the things that I completed recently. Um, a lot of fun, and I have, a, I have a good time with it. Usually that's what I do when I'm off. I didn't do that this time. And so, which means when I came back, I didn't really have a good, like, I just purely goofed off. We didn't do, we didn't do Jack. And we ate a lot, we drank a lot, and we sat and read uh, on the beach a lot. Um, and whoa, watch surfers and ordered, holy, I know, right? I am slipping. Yeah, things are, it's uh, getting, and I'm going to probably do that a lot more this week. Like this week that I don't have any work planned on purpose. I like, don't think that you need to go hire me for consulting. I'm not taking any new clients until like October or uh, September, maybe I think it is. Um, 
but uh, going to spend a lot of time this week streaming. So anywho, so this uh, brought me to, I start up the stream this morning and I'm like, I really wanted to stream, but I didn't know what I wanted to talk about. And so I have a list of notes for every class, for every training class, mastering, index tuning, query tuning, server tuning, all that kind of stuff. I have a list of things that I have to go and uh, change or write demos for. Well, one of them uh, can, just came out of the parameter sniffing class. Somebody asked a question about, how does SQL Server get bad estimates even when there are statistics? Like even when it's just a simple where clause, how does SQL Server screw that up? So I'm like, that is, it was a great, and I wrote a demo on the fly to address the question, and I wanted to go through and do it in a more formal way. So this morning, I'm going to first explain the problem. Then as we go, I'm going to gather screenshots in order to write a blog post. Now I should tell you that normally when I write blog posts, I do it on the Mac. So I have a whole workflow of like, I use a certain snip screenshot tool, the built-in one. I drag and drop my image files a certain way. So you're gonna see me kind of herpa-derping around a little bit like a teenager in the back seat of a car. Um, but the reason why I'm doing that is just so that it's totally inside of, <laughs> not throwing away my shot. Richie, you'll be disappointed. I didn't watch that still, even though it's on Disney Plus. We don't have Disney Plus, but uh, I'm going to get it because I want to see The Mandalorian and I want to see Hamilton. So uh, that's on the list for this week. We ran, we wanted to push through all the TV that we had piled up. I was behind on... I watch terribly bad TV. I was behind on Deadliest Catch. Uh, behind the 90 Days, we're into 90 Day Fiance. I know, I know, it's really bad. Uh, Deadliest Catch, what was the other one? Um, Alone which is a wonderful survival show out of the Arctic. And there's one other one, Holy Moly, Holy Moly, the mini golf show. <laughs> I told you I watch bad TV, but Holy Moly is actually amazing. If you like really bad TV. All right, so what I'm gonna do this morning is I'm gonna talk through that statistics problem. So I gotta give you a little background background behind the scenes. And this is also, like everything as I'm writing this, I'm gonna include the video stream starting like right now inside the blog post so that people can, if they prefer to watch me do it live, they can do it live. So uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be explaining it to you first in a short like five minute time span. Oh, I'm, see, I'm surprised that you, well, I could, I'm surprised you like uh, Holy Moly. But this alone season's been fantastic. It's been really good. So I'm going to show y'all like in a demo fairly quickly. I say fairly quickly, like I'm going to aim for like 15, 20 minutes. Then I'm going to go back through and actually gather the screenshots. So let's start out with the smallest version of Stack Overflow, the 2010 version and the users table, the very smallest one. There aren't that many rows in it. So I'm gonna use Stack Overflow 2010. Go, select count star from DBO users. Just to give you a rough idea, there are about 299,000, so there are about 300,000 users inside the locations, to, or 300,000 users inside the users table. Let's say that I have a stored procedure that finds people by location. So let's say, and I won't even do it as a stored procedure, just to keep it simple, because I'm always trying to figure out how much I'm gonna teach the audience inside the short time span of a blog post. I try to aim for like 15 minutes of readability. So let's say, select star from DBO users, where location equals, and I'm just gonna pick a location out. Uh, Surly Dev, where are you from? Or, well, Surly Dev may not have a uh, Stack Overflow account. Where display name like, I you know what I should use? He says the UK, but I don't. Oh, you do, and it's oh we asked this before, and it's not Surly Dev, right? Like it's something else. Richie, a rich. I've always owed Richie something because he was just missed the cutoff. Yes. Oh, Comet Bill. Uh, so let's let's see where Rich. So Richie's in Miami, Florida. Select star. From DBO users, where location equals Miami, Florida. And for this to work, Richie still needs to be in the in the database in 2010 or in uh, 
It's there with the exact same uh, location in the big database. Let's go see. He is. He didn't change his. Uh, <laughs> uh, he didn't change his uh, location. Okay, perfect. That'll work. All right. Uh, let's see if even lucky is he order by reputation descending. Richie, are you the old highest by Richie? You're not even close. Damn it, Richie. <laughs> you had one job. Wow, there are people with some high reputations over in Miami, Florida. Uh, okay, so what could we use to find what could we use to find Richie? Uh, order by I but if I order by ID, then it's not gonna need an index. Um, uh, upvotes view website URL. Yeah, I can't do any. That is a really low ID, though. You should be extraordinarily proud of that. Richie, how did you know to sign up for it that early? That's incredible. Well, twelve thousand is a lot for for mere mortals, people like you and me. You know, it's it's uh, it doesn't take a lot to get to the ninety ninth percentile at Stack Overflow. Okay, so that Miami will work perfectly. We'll say select star from users where location equals Miami, Florida. And when I do the web, the, when I do the um, screenshot, I'll figure out how to make sure to make it so that Joris is in the initials or Joris is in the beginning. I follow Jeff. Well, so did I, but damn. Okay, so so I'm gonna say select star from users where location in Miami, Florida. I'm gonna say create a hi Natik, create index location. Oh no, congrats! That's very nice, very good. Um, on DBO users location, in order to set the stage, uh, I'm gonna create that in both. I'm going to create it in the 2010 and the, actually I'll create it in all of them because I'm going to create it in the 2013 one as well. So when you create a, a, an index on something, you get a statistics histogram on that column. So I need to explain what the statistic histogram is inside this post. And it's going to be a little tricky to, oh, oh peace out, Richie. Uh, have fun. So drive safely. Uh, wear your mask. Not, in, I mean, you don't have to inside the car, obviously, but okay. So um, let's see here. How do I want to start telling this story? I want to start by saying if you run a select star from users where location equals Miami, SQL servers estimates. So here in this case, he estimate. Well, let's look at the actual execution plan. So SQL Server, S whoa, this is beautiful. SQL Server even screwed up the estimate already. Oh, this is fantastic. Oh, I love it. Oh, even on an easy query like this, SQL Server manages to screw it up. So here's the deal. So I am putting in, I have an index on location. You can see the index says, the index is on location. And SQL Server says, oh, I estimate about 13 rows will come back. How many rows actually came back? 600 and, well, look, it's not really that important. So, oh, this is beautiful. Even on the tiny data, the estimate screws up. But the blast radius is really small because 13 versus 625, who really cares? So let's say order by... Uh, display name, just to put it on there. And let's see if, perfect. So in a small data set like this, in Stack Overflow 2010, it doesn't really matter that the estimate is this far boned. Good morning, Patrick. Good to see you. How do, how's it going, sir? So in a, in a data set this small, so with Stack Overflow 2010, there just aren't that many people. So the row overflow doesn't really, or the, the, um, the sheer in as estimate and accuracy doesn't really matter that much. But if we go out and grow this up to the full-blown, oh, does that Stack Overflow? Oh, that's no fun. That's the full-blown Stack Overflow database. All right, that's not quite as much fun. Let's go back to the original version. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's even a good one. So SQL Server here only estimated that 10 rows were going to come back when in reality like 100 rows came back. He was off by a factor of 10x. So why was he off by a factor of 10x even when we have an index on location and statistics on location? So to find out, we need to go look at DBCC show statistics and say, SQL Server, tell me what you know about the locations on the users table. And SQL Server says, well, there are about 300,000 rows in here. 
and I sampled all of them. Here are the rows that I came out with that are like the outliers inside here. So in this, the way that statistics work is you get up to 201 steps in this histogram. So if you scroll down here, you'll see, and it says up top there, 201 steps in the histogram. If I scroll down here, ex well, exactly. So, so really, I do that exact thing in mastering parameter sniffing. And I also look for outliers. For example, where are places where SQL Server knows that there are hardly any users that come back, but then all of a sudden, even though there are hardly any users there, those users ask a spectacular amount of questions. So he ends up with what I call like a, a first order and a second order estimation error. So if I go down here to Miami, there's no bucket for Miami. Miami isn't one of the top 201 largest rows. So what SQL Server does when he's looking at these estimates, he says, well, uh, I know that it's in this bucket in between Mexico and Michigan. How appropriate is that? There's somewhere inside this bucket between Mexico and Michigan. And I know that for people in our locations inside this bucket, there are an average of 10.3 people who live in each of those locations. Well, Miami is an outlier among those. The kind of takeaway of this blog post is going to be, if you happen to hit a location that is such an outlier that SQL Server puts it in the 201 steps, you're fine. Can you scroll up to the Bs? For you, Surly Dev, I can. Let's see if I can get all the Bs on screen. There we go. So, and keep in mind that this is the small, this is the Stack Overflow 2010 database, and the, the skew will change. Yeah, Blackpool, UK. So if you say in Blackpool, Blackpool's in between Birmingham and Boise, SQL Server thinks that there are about three rows for people who match any given location. Hi, Jitendra. So what I'll say is, if I turn around and take Blackpool, UK, and I'll say Blackpool, UK, Oops, Blackpool, UK. That is where that estimate of three rows comes from, where SQL Server decided that he was going to guess three rows were going to come back, because that's the average in between whatever was like Birmingham and something else. So given that, this, now there are no rows returned. That doesn't mean that you're not in there. This is the 2010 copy. You may not have logged in until a later version. So I'll take the full-blown version, for example, and rerun the same query. Oh, you've got your, looks like you're something else then. So let's go select star from, what'd you say your name was? I'm going to scroll back up to see. Um, Manchester. Uh, Comet Bill. Select star from DBO users. Where? Display name. Like, uh, or it's equal then. Comet Bill, and let's get your exact location. Oh, you fully spelled out Blackpool United Kingdom, which it'll get the exact same three-row estimate here. And... Mm, um, so that one, it got eight. Oh, it might be either in a different bucket, or that's interesting that it would... I wonder if it's... Uh, oh, it's an auto-parameterized query now. That gets even inter more interesting. Okay. So that the thing that we just kind of step through there quickly, that's what I'm going to go flesh out a blog, I go, what we're going to go flesh out a blog post to write. So let's stop for a second and think about how I got to tell this story. So the way that I got to tell the story, I got to think about what the users already know and what they don't know yet. So they don't probably know uh, that there are 201 buckets max in a histogram. I'm not going to teach them too much about that. I'm going to do that in a very short time span. They probably don't know how SQL Server picks the 201 buckets, and I'm going to kind of declare that as out of scope. I'm not going to try to teach that inside the blog post. Um, what I am going to try to teach them is now that they know that there are two, when I say as I teach them, there are 201 buckets in the histogram. If your location isn't one of those top 201, you're probably not going to get the best estimates. So to see which ones are really going to be screwed, what you do is go select the locations group by count star or order by count star descending. And stuff that's not in, say, the top 200 is probably going to have a bad time. Okay, so to teach this, I may not even need to say um, 
Now I'm trying to think of how fat, how how tightly constrained I can do the blog post because I always want to teach as much as I can in as few words as possible. Um, so as I write the blog post, I don't know that I'm going to talk about over time. You know what? We're going to start with the tiny stack overflow database. In the in this blog post, I'm only going to use the 2010 copy, and then in the next hour, we're going to write a second blog post. It's going to talk about now how does things get even worse as your data skew starts to grow. All right, let's give it a shot. So to tell the story, we're going to start with the Stack Overflow 2010 database. And I'm going to say that because I search for people a lot, I've created an index on location, and there are about 300,000 people in the table. So let's go run that query, and I can go copy-paste this out, and let's start writing the blog post. So finding, uh, or this, what I call it, the 201 buckets problem. Welcome to the club, Cody boy. Uh, why outlier value, outliers, uh, um, finding, finding row, or finding values that will get bad estimates. I've talked about this in a, in a couple of streams before, um, but when you're writing a blog post, there are two kinds of blog posts. One are for your regular readers, people who are already finding you. The other are for Googlers, people who are Googling to find a solution to a problem. This one's for my regular readers. I'm not going to try to SEO this blog post title at all because I don't think that people, um, if I wanted to SEO it, I would have to write it coming more from the frame of, why SQL Server's estimates versus actuals are so far off. And I don't think a lot of people are going to Google for that. I think this one's going to be more of a, like a gem for my regular readers. Uh, fam does, Dave says, how does one fix these estimates? We talk about what, what we keep inside scope and what we keep out of scope. That, that's one where I'm going to hold off for a class that I would hold for a training class, just because it is so hard to go into all the details on this stuff. Uh, good, I'm glad, Azafaza. Good, thanks. All right, so let's see here. I'm not going to publish it immediately. This one's actually going to go out this week, though. I think I'm going to do this on... <coughs> also, my list of things to do this week is to put in a mute button on my stream deck. Uh, so let's see. Good morning, David. Let's see here. So Wednesday is the 8th. Okay, so let's say July 8th at 08.15 a.m. That's when I usually publish my blog posts. Uh, let's go see here. This I don't know that I have a category. I do on statistics. Okay, so uh, let's... So I'm gonna, I don't know how I'm going to open up the blog post yet. I'm going to save that for later, so I'm going to say fix, fix. Um, I'll start with the um, Ruffiano. You watch and learn, and you'll see. It's really interesting how this works. Um, I'll start with the smallest Stack Overflow 2010 database, and I'll go get brentozar.com go query stack. I'll get the link for that here in a second, um, and set up an index, and set up an index on location because I'm set up an index on location just period. Uh, let's go put the T SQL inside there and paste and add. Uh, let's go get the URL for querying the Stack Overflow database, Stack Overflow 2010 database, and paste. Um, there are about 300,000 users, not a lot, but enough that it will start to give me some, give SQL Server some estimation problems. Estimation problems. Um, let's give them a screenshot to show that there are 300,000 rows because I always like to back up with whatever I'm saying just to keep the storytelling going. So, man, this is where I have this workflow nailed down in the Mac and I'm used to certain keyboard shortcuts and I find myself uh, trying to run them. I got to remember for because I'm writing this for you over in a VM, I'm going to go do a new snip. And let's see here. We'll do this. Do, 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 do. Okay. And then save it. We're going to put it in the downloads as uh, 300k users, and we'll minimize that. Now we'll come back over here and insert an image. See, I'm so used to dragging and dropping from uh, WordPress. Uh, select downloads, 300,000 users, and we're not going to align that, and perfect. Okay, so now that they can see that there are about 300,000 users. 
Now let's start. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm so used to saying now because this is what I would say when I talk out loud, not necessarily when I write blog posts. So uh, if any time when you create an index, when you create an index, SQL Server automatically creates a statistic with the same name. A statistic is one a kiba page. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dave. I wish your country would stop throwing all kinds of laws that are really hard to comply with. It's just me. It's literally just me and Richie at the company. It's it. There's also my wife, but she's not doing anything for GDPR compliance, believe me. Uh, statistic is one AK page uh, with metadata about the object's contents. In this case, it's uh, a list of up to 201 location values and the number of people who live in each of those locations. You can see these statistics with DBCC show statistic. <laughs> it's uh, that's very possible. Maybe I'm even surprised. I was going to say I'm surprised. I only I was surprised. I only uh, uh, answered one. I don't tend to ask a lot on there. I do tend to ask a lot on the I do not even a lot. I think I've only asked five on um, DBA .stack Exchange. Um, I'm surprised I've answered 166. That's actually surprising to me because I don't spend a lot of time on Stack Overflow. I think these days I spend more time on dba.stackexchange.com. As we talk about in my free class, how to think like the SQL Server engine. So I'm going to link them over to how to think like the engine, brentozar.com go engine, and then go copy that out. So my free class, how to think like the SQL Server engine. Now let's show them a picture of that. Let's go do DBCC show statistics so that they can see the number of rows in a location. And then we'll pull this around over here and come up here, tighten this up a little bit for the screenshot. I'm using my keyboard hotkey key again, and that's not how this works. Uh, so let's get DBCC show statistics. Doo, doo, doo. And that's perfect. All right, we'll go for that. And save show statistics. Let's go DBCC show statistics. So then let's put that in the blog post. Doo, doo, doo. Add media. There's that guy. Afternoon, Spitfire. Good to see you again. Howdy. So let's see. So um, this helps SQL Server estimate how many rows will be returned. If, you're, if the location you're looking for happens to be, oh, I need to, so um, I need to say, um, well, okay, let's start with there. The, uh, if it happens to be one of the one of the outliers that SQL Server chose as large enough to get its own bucket in the histogram, then your estimates will be pretty doggone accurate, like this. So let's search for one of the ones that's up in the list. Ah, Carlos, welcome to the club. Thank you, Carlos. I appreciate it. And for those of you who have Amazon Prime, if you hook up your account with um, uh, Amazon, uh, like Connect Amazon and Twitch, you get free Twitch Prime subscriptions, so you can subscribe to streamers totally for free. Um, uh, Gallon Bunga says, what happens if you make a primary key larger than 8 kilobytes? Well, you can't, so that's not so much of a worry there. Um, you, you raise a really interesting point, which is uh, what happens as the value size changes, what happens to the 8K page? <laughs> and the crown isn't shown on the, on the pop-up chat, but you get the crown on the, uh, when you're looking in Twitch, at the embedded streams in Twitch. Uh, so I need to pick one outlier to use. So let's say, because I like Ahmedabad, let's say Ahmedabad, India. So let's say copy, um, to do, 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 and we'll say up here, select star from DBO users, where location equals Ahmedabad, India, 
And I don't even need an order by. Yeah, sure, we'll do an order by in here. Order by display name. Uh, and I'm going to wrap it just a little so that it'll look a little bit better on the blog post. So let's say that estimate. And let's go get our execution plan. And let's screenshot that little fella. Wish there was a hotkey for that. Uh, do, 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 do. So it's this. Da, 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 da. Copy. All right. Uh, Ahmedabad, Ahmedabad, India. All right, so here, let's see, let's come back. Oh, I need the copy, copy. So let's get this query and paste that in. And and I, the only reason I'm doing this in Windows is just quick for the streaming for y'all. I'm going to get to the point where I uh, do the streaming just natively from the Mac. I mean, I do the streaming from the Mac, but I'm going to start showing you some of this stuff inside Azure Data Studio rather than SQL Server Management Studio, just because I'm trying to gradually segue over to that. Gives you a preview of something that I'm going to be working on on a, a stream probably this week is putting the entire Stack Overflow large size database up in either Amazon RDS or Azure SQL DB just so I can have an always on copy so I can quickly write blog posts and demos while we're doing this stuff. It's going to be kind of weird though. Well, I'll elaborate more on that uh, when I hate that. Oh my God, I hate the hell out of that. So I certainly dev. I like it for stuff like emails. I hate it in blog posts so passionately. Um, Spiritedly, um, oh no, I'm doing the other way. I'm staying on Mac. I've decided that I am going to ride out the rest of my career on Mac, like I'm going to retire before I'm going to switch operating systems again, because I've tried switching operating systems a few times and it's such just a giant pain in the rear. Um, because Ahmedabad is an outlier and it has its own bucket as shown in the screenshot above, SQL, um, SQL Server, uh, and all of them are. Uh, so RDS is costly, Azure SQL DB is costly, you name it. Um, estimates exactly 150, what was it, 100? Ahmedabad, 159 rows. See the equal rows of value in the screenshot above. So now we'll dump in the Ahmedabad value. I, now, okay, so I'm I'm kind of I'm I'm jumping around a little bit, and I think I might need to explain this a little bit more for users. So here's the deal. So as I'm as I'm reading through this, I'm saying. So it, the Ahmedabad up here says, I, I, I do need to explain it. I'm going to type it out um, like Ahmedabad. So like Ahmedabad, what the what? Uh, for a simple user database, not many columns. How many users would you need to have before choosing your one database over the app? Oh, um, that's kind of irrelevant here. I'm not going to I'm not going to go into it just because it's not relevant to what we're talking about here. Um, yeah, Tom, I don't like the 2010 copies because they're just so uh, small for things like parameter sniffing. They just don't really work very well. Uh, Ahmedabad, Bad, India above, then SQL Server knows a lot about it. So now I'm going to explain what each of the columns means. Range rows equals 54. Uh, this means that in the range of locations between uh, Adelaide, Australia, and Ahmedabad, India, there are 54 rows. Uh, equal rows equals 159. This means that Ahmedabad, the range high key, has exactly one or nine rows had um, had exact there were I need to be so I'm being kind of specific about R were and R because the stats were updated at a point in time and the stuff may have changed over the point in time uh, had exactly 159 no there is not JP uh, there's means that uh, there had exactly 159 rows. Uh, this may seem odd because it's higher than 54. I'm, I'm not going to say that. Excluding Adelaide and Adelaide and Ahmedabad. Uh, uh, distinct range rows equals 25. This means that of the 54 rows 
in the range rows group, there were 25 distinct locations. Um, get your boss. Yeah, but it's not even enough to run a serious Azure SQL DB instance. It's, it's a, a piddling amount compared to what you would need to run Azure SQL DB. I mean, you'd run like an S0, one of those tiny sizes that just hardly has any capacity whatsoever. Uh, and at that point, it's useless for performance tuning demos. Yeah, even at 150 a month, you're not running an Azure SQL DB uh, instance of any serious size. You get like two, two uh, cores tops. Um, so then average range rows equals, what's it for Ahmedabad, 2.16. This means that the average, uh, that this means that if you pass in a location, spare the Lee, welcome to the club. Thank you. I appreciate it. Between uh, Adelaide and Ahmedabad, SQL Server will guess that it has 2.16 rows. Um, since uh, let's so for example, if I query for Ahmedabad, which happens, you're welcome. Thanks, Debonair. Ahmedabad, India, which happens to be one of the outliers that got its own bucket. Your estimates will be pretty doggone accurate like this. Uh, da -da -da. Now I don't have to repeat that part right there. I can say, oh, I'll even leave it in there. There we go. Now, uh, so, uh, to do, 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 do. Oh, SQL Dev DBA. Thanks. I'm glad you liked it. Um, all right, so let's see here. So that gets me pretty close. That gets me to here's what's going on with Ahmedabad. This works really well, but only if you're one of the outliers. Uh, what if you're not? What if you're... Okay, so I got to talk through how I'm going to explain this. So we've seen how it works for the 201 outliers. Um, now I got to find a way to say those outliers are only for basically the top 200 locations. It's not exactly the top 200 locations, but that's a good way to think about it. So if you're not one of the top 200 locations, but you're still an outlier, then you're going to have problems. I always like talking it out out loud. And I seriously, when I'm writing blog posts, I'll actually go, and it's funny how I do it. I go to the window, I'll go stand over the window, and it's as if I'm telling the public. I'm like, okay, so here's the deal. When you're doing this, and I'll talk through and pace through the whole thing as if I'm giving a training class because that way it helps me say it a few times and get it to the point where I want to type it out. Okay, um, so I think I'm at the point where I want to start typing it out, but I'm going to go, I am completely out of espresso, and I want some more sweet, delicious espresso, and my coffee shop downstairs doesn't open until 8 o'clock. <laughs> early depth of shorts. You know, it's really funny. I did a webcast with these recently, and I was like, P um, I don't want people to think that these are underwear, but I, they do kind of look like underwear now that I'm, I'm uh, out like this. Um, all right, so let's go. We'll take a five-minute bio break. I am going to go refuel my uh, espresso, and I will be right back. So five-minute bio break. Oh, thanks, Debonair. I'm sure Debonair was, uh, was whoops, over there. Debonair was really cheering my shorts is probably what it was. I can only imagine. Um, oh, good. I, I like that. That was good. All right, so five-minute uh, five bio break, and I will be right back. Hold on.
Okay, welcome back. All right, so when we last left off, we had uh, shown the statistics, the 201 buckets and the statistics histogram thing. I realized as I walk away, you always think of other things when you walk away and you want to go get coffee. Um, I uh, thought about the, I need shorts with the Porsche crest. See, I don't want to be one of those guys who wears Porsche clothing. Um, like, I don't mind the Lufka cult shirt, uh, but yeah, the, the, <laughs> when we were discussing your attire... <laughs> Uh, I don't want to be one of the guys. I always think of it as a stereotyped Ferrari guy. The stereotyped Ferrari guy. You can tell he has a Ferrari because all his clothes are Ferraris. It's, it's almost like he's going, ask me about my Ferrari. And I'm like, no, you know, I'd really rather not do that. I'm like, I'm a fun guy who happens to own a Porsche, but the Porsche doesn't define me. At some point here in the stream, I should probably talk about the car stereo and radar gear that I just ordered. So Helmet, my Porsche 911, is going away to Portland, Oregon for two weeks to have a stereo and uh, uh, radar and laser uh, type thing installed. And I am like embarrassed about how much this stuff costs. But I'm going to keep that car for the rest of my life, so I don't really mind it. Uh, but holy moly, there are some amazing radar and laser uh, things built into there. <laughs> the battle wagon. Oh, I love it. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's pretty good. That's uh, I like that quite a bit. Mm. I'm not driving there. No, Jim, I'm not. That's a really good question, and I thought about it. Uh, because to get a car shipped from here to Portland in a covered uh, it covered trailer is three thousand bucks, and this tells you something about the radar and the radar laser and stereo stuff that I'm having put in the car. Shipping the car to the place is three thousand bucks, so that tells you uh, how much the freaking stereo and all that cost. But I'm really excited. The people who do it are they're like the best in the industry for for Porsche specific installs. They have all this custom gear they use. It's really neat. Um, and I will do a stream on that when it comes back. When it comes back from uh, Music Car, I'll uh, I'll do a stream and walk people through it. Of course, you won't get the uh, Grumpy Dick Game Dev. You're absolutely correct. Uh, the, it tells uh, the, it's not like people are going to uh, appreciate the the work that the stereo work that goes into it because you can't hear it through the things like an iPhone or whatever. But um, yeah. Gowanbunga says, laser like in dancing club? Uh, no, laser jammers. So if uh, a, a police officer tries to, to measure your speed with a laser, it'll block uh, the thing. Um, so there, it's a kind of a cottage industry. You're not allowed to have radar uh, jammers. You can't have a device that jams radar. You can have a device that jams lasers. Uh, so what the way that they work is they have several uh, receivers in the front and rear of the car, and then whenever they detect an incoming laser signal from a, a, a speed enforcement device, uh, they shoot out lasers in multiple ways that jam the speed detectors. So there you go. All right, so... Mm. When last we met... Uh, so when last we met... Um, uh, we were discussing the statistics histograms, the outliers and the statistics histograms. So now uh, I want, what I want to say is if you're in the top 200, it's kind of easy to understand that you'll get the right estimates. Man, it's hot in here. I'm going to go turn the AC down by one or two degrees. You're going to get pretty good estimates, but as you go outside of that, you're going to get worse estimates. So now I need to go, oh, it wasn't even that, uh, it's already up that high. Um, so now I'm going to go find the top 200, except I'm going to say the top 1,000. So let's say, what if you're a big, oops, I got to switch. What if you're a big location? Certainly, does, does it break the car for you? No, uh, unfortunately, no. And you, to some extent, I get worried about things like Teslas and all that that have self-driving capabilities because I've seen them think that something is coming across the road and they jam on the brakes at freeway speeds. I've seen that a couple times in California where just out of nowhere, the car starts braking. And I'm like, eh, I'm not uh, interested in that. As of as of, we actually don't have speed cams that often here in the States, unlike the UK uh, or Canada or Iceland or wherever. We don't have a lot of speed cams at all. We have a lot of red light cams, uh, but the red light cams are well documented in apps like Waze, so they're easy to miss. And I don't, I don't ever want to run red lights anyway. Um, surly Dev. Yeah, surly dev. Well, when you buy a car like a Porsche 911, I do not use, I do not stay at the IBRF. Well, plus in California. I mean, there are a lot of great roads out here. 
So what if you're a big location, but not big enough of an outlier to get your own statistics bucket? To find one, let's grab... Oh, we don't, we don't even need to find one. Well, I'm going to go run the same query, but I'm going to run it for Miami. Copy. Paste. And let's try Miami, Florida. Florida, because I think that's the one. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to even say option recompile just to prove, because I want to prove that, uh, that even though we're not caching a plan, that the stats are wrong. Yes, that's so fantastic. Oh, yes. Um, so the stats are bogus here. Uh, so let's get the screenshot tool out. Damn it, I love it when it's that easy. That's just ridiculous. It's like taking candy from a baby. We'll move it out to here. That's perfect. Uh, save. And then say Miami, Florida. And then let's grab our query. Copy. Like, say, like, say Miami, Florida. Uh, all right. Oh, so I've got to make a, my, a Florida man joke in here somehow. Um, so let's upload the files. Insert into posts. PC Egley, you're welcome. That's okay, as long as you're not presenting. And even if you are presenting, it's kind of okay if you delay. <laughs> um, here, I've even used option recompile. And yet I'm getting an estimate of just 10 rows and uh, when there are actually 99 people. There are actually 99 Florida Floridians. Um, to find out, scroll down in the DBCC show statistics output until you're in the Miami area. <laughs> it's trippy, the ugly, yes, exactly. So let's go back to DBCC show statistics and let's explain the output of that. Do, 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 copy, paste. Get the screenshot just right. And you, and you. And then let's scroll down to Miami and put it right up at the top to make the screenshot area easier. Highlight that. And let's, damn, this is easy. Oh, this is so nice. Uh, so let's get from you to you, do, 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 and go, and file save, uh, Miami, Miami, Florida stats, and this is going to drive home the blog post, boom, and you, 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 and insert into you. Um, there's your problem. Miami is in between Mexico and Michigan. Strangely appropriate. And so the histogram means, yeah, and you'll see why, Sven Hoff. Uh, that's, it's, and it's a good question. I always know that I'm doing the right thing when I'm writing the blog post uh, or doing a training class. When someone asks a question and it's about the very next thing that I have to explain, I'm like, yes, you, I'm doing it correctly. Woo! The histogram means uh, there, uh, Miami, Florida isn't there. Uh, Miami, Florida is in the bucket between Mexico and Michigan. Uh, rain, average range rows equals 10.36 means that if you're looking for any location between Mexico and Michigan, it's uh, SQL Server estimate that the location has 10.36 uh, people in it. And in this case, that's not so accurate for Miami. <laughs> um, so, so in essence, um, Miami, Florida isn't big enough to be one of the 
201 outliers featured in the statistics buckets, but it's large enough that it has a relatively unusual number of people. And boy, as Richie can tell you, the people in Miami are unusual. So how do we fix it? Stay tuned for, I don't know that I, I don't know that you need to fix it. Um, so let's stop and talk about that for a second. So one of the things I love about WordPress is that down at the bottom there, at the bottom left, it has word count 492. So it shows that we have 492 words. I usually tend to aim for less than 1,000 words. If I can explain the story in less than 1,000 words, that's usually a comfortable blog post for me. Um, so I've got the basic storytelling inside here. I don't know. Um, the title's now wrong. The title's now wrong, but it was kind of a placeholder right from the beginning. I didn't know how I wanted to tell the story. Um, so now I'm going to say, so what do we do about Miami's inaccurate estimates? Well, in this case, nothing. Hi, Jesus. Uh, so let's put this in as a heading. Uh, so in this case, nothing. 99 rows versus 10 rows isn't really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. However, so it will become a big deal if, deal if, the data size starts to grow. Note that I'm using the stack overflow 2010 database in this post, but stay tuned for tomorrow's post. Uh, if we, oh, we do more joins. We join to other tables, in which case the number of, whoops, number, number of rows in each related table will start to cause a problem. Uh, <laughs> for the plot, also for the shorts. Mm. Um, is that, that's, really, that's really pretty much it. In terms of the estimates, that isn't that big of a problem. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's post in which the... S oh, 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 oh. Um, no, let's stop there, uh, in which we'll start to explore ways or things that would cause a problem, uh, situations where this would be a bigger issue. Um, uh, I also want, I also, somehow I want to also say, somehow I also want to say that people, people think that they're going to solve this by updating statistics. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to update statistics with full scan and then scroll down again to that area and go, nope, see, it's still not one of the outliers. And you can update your brains out, and that isn't going to do anything. So let's, let's add that into the post, too. Um, so let's say, will updating statistics fix this? Um, so we'll go. To find out, we'll give SQL Server the best possible chance at uh, tackling the problem. We'll go update stats with full scan. Do, 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 do. Uh, do, do, do. Update statistics, DBO users with full scan. Go. And then we'll run DBCC show statistics again. And do 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 and scroll down to Miami. <laughs> it's just because he sits there on Twitch all day. Don't don't let that fool you. Uh, so there we go. And do do do. Oh, not my screenshot techniques are different here. New. No. And we'll get you and you. All right. So that is save updated stats. And we'll go back over here and copy this, and then do, 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 which still produces the same stats. Oh, wow, you're on Furlo. No kidding. Seriously. Um, that's like me on my jury duty. I'm like, uh, and you, you're in the UK, so when did the paying run out? Because the UK government was paying everybody's salaries, right? Is that still going on, or is that uh, 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 done already? 
Uh, da, 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 da. So let's see here. Miami, what did I just do? Updated stats. Updated stats was the one. Uh, 80% at salary. Okay. Ooh, kept at 2,500. That's not a lot. Uh, 2,500 GBP to USD. Oh, that's not so bad. That's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. That's per day, right? You're getting that much per day? <laughs> wow, till the end of October. Well, that's that's pretty cool. I have to say that's kind of awesome. Mm. I like that the, the y'all's government did a good job there. Now uh, let's see here. So we were doing over on this side. Um, oops. So I need I got to do this over here. Copy ta, 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 ta. copy that there. And then I needed to put the stats command up into there so people can copy paste. I think you're right. I think I think you're right, Surly Dev. I think there's going to come a point where uh, companies will start to let people go. You know, we saw that in the states too. Um, <laughs> We saw that in the states with um, well, how did they do it? It was it was some kind of deal with the Payroll Protection Act, I think it was, where if you applied for government uh, loans, that they would basically pay your payroll for eight weeks. It was like eight weeks or ten weeks, but you had to keep everyone on staff. If you did any layoffs whatsoever, then they would not pay your salaries. So people basically people kept everyone on staff, and then that period ended like a week or two ago, I think, depending on when you qualified for it. And so all of a sudden, you started seeing a lot more layoffs. I've also seen my clients do a lot more um, closing their leases for office space that they're saying they're not going to bother keeping their leases open because they don't know when this is going to get better and they figured out that hey what do you know tech people can actually work from home so there's no real reason to uh to uh keep your office space we lost the md of one of our brands oh managing director managing director yeah yeah i mean it's I was all, oh yeah, so many weird things about this point in time in terms of the economy it's going to be weird to see how things shape up Okay, so I got my stats. I got my stats updated. Uh, David said, surely your company could not work from home. I don't know if you mean my company. I've been working from home since 2004, I think. It's so like 16, 17 years. Uh, all right, so da -da -da, that's all done. After all, you're watching me remotely, right? I mean, that's that's how my job works. Uh, um so that's good. That's good. Uh, it's Miami just... It's, oh, okay, how do I want to explain this? Uh, I said updating stats won't fix it um, because no matter how many times you update stats, Miami's data isn't changing enough to be the point where there are 201 outliers. Ooh, Jim, you're retired. Very nice. Uh, no matter how many times you update... Whoops. Update stats there are still just only 201 buckets max and Miami doesn't have enough data to be one of those outliers to find similar locations do a top 1000 uh, and the folks in the 200 to 1000 range are probably going to be your outliers that get bad estimates. And let's go do that demo. Let's say select top 1000 location, count star as Rex from DBO users, group by location, order by count star descending. Execute, and then let's go in and look at those, and we'll go down to... Uh, where's Miami in this list? Oh, man, I don't really want... Oh, we know how many people are in Miami. It's 99. Oh, that's funny. Um, uh, so that's perfect. That's actually kind of gorgeous. Uh, Sven, I do. 54, 55, somewhere in there. The, the target keeps changing just a little bit wrong. What on the what is my best friend? <laughs> okay, that's interesting. Uh, so let's go get new and then grab you. Doo, 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 doo. And w is there an outlier location that I like in there? Seoul's kind of cool. Uh, Sri Lanka. Vratsvav! Just because I can pronounce Vratsvav, I'll use that. Uh, da -da -da -da. There we go. And call these outliers. And oh, I'm going to count. I'm going to grab the count query out of there. 
count. One, two. That's a terrible joke. Paste. And then these. And sure enough, down over the 200 range is our, friend, is our Floridian friend. And then add media, upload files, and I should sort these by date modified. That'll make it a lot easier to find. And there we go. Uh, note that the uh, exact note that <sighs> note that the how do I want to say this? I want to say that the top 200 aren't necessarily the ones who get their own buckets. The top 200 rows by location, by count star, aren't necessarily the, whoops, the ones who get their own buckets, depending on data distribution and who's next to each other. Uh, some of these may be grouped together. Overall, the 200-1000 range are great uh, examples of out possible outliers, though. Possible problematic estimates, though. Uh, I don't need parentheses there. Screw it. It's long enough. All right, there we go. I think we're good. Oh, I love it. Fall. Now I need to produce. I, so I got the whole blog post done. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go set the featured image just to put something inside there. And we'll use Miami. And there he goes. And we are good. We have a blog post for Wednesday. <sighs> so now I should say, too. Um, does it we I started streaming almost exactly an hour ago. It was like an hour and two minutes ago. Does it always take me an hour to write a blog post? No, if I'm not talking through it and if I'm not uh, explaining things as I go, sometimes it takes me a lot less. Sometimes it's as little as half an hour. Sometimes it's like three, four hours, depending on how in-depth we go. But you also see now where I scope it so much at the beginning. At the beginning, I was like, okay, here are the things that I'm going to assume they already know. Here are the things I don't know. Here are the things that are off the table for this. I ended up at 740 words and then the next blog post is going to be uh, we're going to do the same thing but with the stack overflow database we're going to do the giant uh, version of the database and we're going to show how a like sorts can end up spilling to disk and b as we do more joins will end up into more problems um, but so let's take another short bio break here. We'll take a five minute bio break. And when we come back, we'll write the next part of the blog post or the next blog post in the series. So five minute bio break. We will be right back.
All righty, we are back. So, yes, uh, who was it? Uh, David says, I have to buy one of my coffee mugs. Do, 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 do. Speaking of which, there's only hot water inside here at the moment because I just ordered my espresso from downstairs. My coffee shop opens in about 45 minutes downstairs. So you got me for about the next 45 minutes. Hopefully, should be easy enough for us to knock out part two, the second blog post in that series uh, next. While I was at it during the break, I thought, oh, I need to reorganize these just a little because I have a post going live. Or I had a post going live on Tuesday. I don't really feel like it's finished. That one was, for those of you who saw me write SP Send Startup Mail a while ago, in an earlier stream, I watched a stored procedure or wrote a stored procedure that would give you an email whenever your SQL Server starts up. Um, yeah, David said the ones on sale on Twitch have white inside. They're also much larger. This is one of my older, smaller ones that I did from when uh, we were doing in-person training classes uh, years back. I'm never going to do those again because I broke so many of them. Shipping them around, where they, they just weren't packed well from the vendor. So I'm never going to do those again. Um, but so I had the SP Send Startup Mail post. That was going to go live on Tuesday. I'm pushing that back till either Thursday or next week because I'm going to write that one in Azure Data Studio instead because I just think it's going to be a little nicer experience in a notebook. Okay, so in part one, I read the title as the 201 buckets problem part one, why you still don't get accurate estimates. So then part two is going to be how those estimates start to backfire as your tables grow. So let's see. <laughs> So here's the part one post, part why you still don't get accurate estimates. Now let's add the part two. So let's go copy and let's go add a new post, the 201 buckets problem part two, how bad estimates backfire as your data grows. So we'll go put this under stats. Uh, to do 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 stats. This one's going to be July the 8th. I move the other one around to July 7th. So we'll say 815. We'll say in the last post, I talked about how uh, you, we don't get accurate estimates because SQL Server statistics only have up to 201 buckets in the histogram. It didn't matter much yes, in, the, in that post, though, because we were using the small Stack Overflow 2010 database. But what happens as our data grows? Let's move to a newer Stack Overflow database, the 2018-06 one that I use for my mastering training classes. We'll create the same index, giving us the same statistics, and then look at the histogram to see how Miami's doing today, uh, doing uh, in how Miami grew over time, over time. All right, so let's go take, I got to get the URL from that post, copy link address, and I talked about how to da, 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 paste. So now we'll get the larger Stack Overflow database. Let's get that link, copy, and paste. Newer Stack Overflow database, paste. And then we'll create the same index. Copy, copy, save. All right. And so paste this in here. Paste. And now I'm just going to call it use Stack Overflow. And copy and add. Now let's go see how things do in the new version. So let's pop a new window just to see. Stack Overflow. And I think I've already got the index created on location, so that's cool. Yep. Uh, so we'll do our select count star. Cottonoot. Cottonoot. Thank you. Welcome to the club. That's uh, very cool. Uh, so now let's see. Now we have. Do, 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 do. We have about 9 million users, 9 million users. So let's come back over here. Now we're up to about 9 million users. Add media 
and upload. Delicious. All right, so, and the statistics histogram for Miami's area. Do, 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 do. Come over here. Big money, no whammies. DBCC show statistics. DBO users. Location. Okay, so here's the deal. Before I hit execute on this, before I hit execute, we need to talk. Because I always like to guess what's going to happen before I hit execute on a query. This is kind of funny, like I try to make betting games with myself. And let's think about what the outcome will be. If I go look at statistics and Miami has its own histogram, I'm going to be pissed. Has its own bucket, I'm going to be pissed. Because that means that I, I may, I, I'm not going to be able to use that exact same location. And I'm too far invested in this blog post to go back and rewrite the earlier versions with a different location, although I could. What I'm hoping is that Miami still isn't one of the outliers enough that it gets its own bucket. Let's find out. So let's say DBCC show statistics and let's look down here for Miami. And big money, no whammies. Where's Miami? It's not there. Yes. Sweet. Thank you, God. All right. So that means there is still no separate bucket for Miami. And I love that now there's a different Mexico. Mexico now has its own bucket. So now it's somewhere between Mexico and Minneapolis. So that's kind of cool. Let's go grab our snipping tool and go show the example of this to our lovely readers. And do, 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 do. There we go. And we'll say... Uh, Miami area stats. That's so perfect. The talk on it doesn't get any better than that. So now in the statistics histogram for Miami's area, add media, upload files. There we go. Um, the data distribution has changed, but Miami still isn't big enough to have its own bucket. Now, um, so uh, Miami, Florida is between, let's see if I can get the Mexico right in Windows keyboard. Nope, I sure can't. Okay, so we're going to copy paste that out of there so that I don't have to hassle around with that. Copy and paste. And Minneapolis, note that Michigan no longer has its own bucket. Uh, uh, average range rows equals 13.3 means that any location in between Mexico and Minneapolis will get an estimate of 13.3 rows. So when we run our Miami query, what's it look like now? And let's go copy paste that. Copy and paste. I'm going to take out the recompile because I don't, I don't, I didn't need it in this example. So let's execute. And okay. Let's turn on actual. No, no. There we go. All right, so there we go. So now we have our estimate on there. And let's see. Let's get the screenshot of that little fella. Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Ah, okay, that's fine. Uh, save Miami estimated, Miami actual plan. Actual plan. There's our add our media in, upload files, and Miami's actual plan. And insert into the post. Uh, estimated number of rows in Miami. Flora is 13, but in actuality, 625 rows come out of the index seek. Um, so what was the heading I used in the last post that was like, so what do we need to do about this? Um, will uh, updating stats doesn't fix it. I'm not worried about that. So there we go. Copy. 
and paste. Uh, the variance is starting to grow now that, oops, grow now that our data sizes have grown larger. So, so what do we do about Miami's inaccurate estimates? And I'm going to copy paste this whole thing back out. This is very instructive. Good. I'm glad you like it. Thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, again, in this case, nothing. 625 rows versus 13 rows isn't really that big of a deal. However, um, uh, it's normally in my in my training classes, I talk about if estimates versus actual are more than 10x off, you start to run into problems. Um, in my mastering, eh, I talk about that even in fundamentals. In uh, my fundamentals of, I need to fix the filtering on that so it doesn't show the CloudBot piece. Uh, fundamentals of query tuning class, I talk about how you want to read query plans from right to left, looking for places where estimates versus actual are 10x off or more. In this case, we're 48x off, but it doesn't really matter that much. SQL Server still allocated enough memory to do the sort, and it didn't spill to disk. Note there's no yellow bang on the sort operator. Um, however, as I noted yesterday, it will become a big deal if we join to other tables. Let's see what happens if we go get the. <laughs> you like that? Isn't that cool? I got to figure out what I'm going to do with query bo or, uh, query box. I still have to figure out what I'm going to go uh, do with that. Oh, Nitos! Wow, there's some people in here who are quiet. Rima Stino and Virgo Pros, V and K, Atten. I haven't seen a lot of you. That's interesting, Nito. Um. So let's see. Let's see what happens if we go get the top. We go if we add a join to comments, for example, to display all the top comments left by people from Miami. All right. Now let's go write that part of the join. So this is where things are really going to start. I'm going to save my draft just so I don't lose that. So now let's go find the top comments left by people from Miami. And I don't know if all those are bots, like which ones are like another TV viewer is probably a bot. Commander Root, I don't, that sounds like a bot to me. I know Restream Bot is a, definitely a bot. So select star from users. Now let's go we'll start cleaning this up a little. You inner, whoops. Enter join DBO comments C on you ID equals C user ID. I'm gonna want to index. I don't I don't know that it really matters. Uh, where you location equals this order by C score descending. So we're gonna say top one thousand. Oops, I want as uppercase. Top one thousand. Uh, you display name, C uh, score, C text. Let's go find the. Now, when I hit execute on this, I expect it to take a little while because I don't have an index. Hi, Alex. I don't have an index on uh, comments, so I expect this to take a little while. Um, oh, interesting. Ask it to leave. Oh, interesting. Wow. And I'm, I'm okay with whoever, like all the, uh, the uh, you can make all your command responses start with a zero with space. Oh, there's also like um, StreamBots has a thing like filter common bots out. It's like a check, mark, check mark. And I, I don't know, um, uh, I think I have it set incorrectly, but, but thanks for that though. All right, so now we have a problem. And the, the problem is such a big word. Now let's go copy paste out that query and then I'll talk about what the problem is. Paste this in here, paste, add the actual plan, 
come back over here. So let's talk about the plan in this or what the problem in, is with this and how it works. Move it over here just so I can tell the story a little easier. So we read plans from right to left, top to bottom. The first thing that SQL Server did was it went and looked up and by location because we have an index on that. SQL Server goes, I think I'm going to find about 13 people who live in Miami. Hey, SQL Server, how many people did you actually find? Well, more than that. Now, it doesn't really matter here. The blast area isn't too bad here. However, now when we come out of here and we go to look up, oh, I do even have an index on user ID. When I go to look up how many comments people have left from Miami, this is where I really wish the plans were three-dimensional. I wish they popped off the page based on the number of times that they were executed. Because if I hover my mouse over this, you start to see the estimated number of executions versus the number of executions. SQL Server thought only 13 people lived in Miami, so he thought he was only going to have to do this 13 times. In reality, he looked up 625 different users' IDs in here because each person has their own set of comments. Even though I have an index on user ID, I still got to look in here 625 times. Now, with 625 people, that also means that I'm going to find way more rows, actual number of rows for all executions, because people, SQL Server didn't know there were so many people in Miami and how much they like to talk. So as this data flows upstream, he also underestimated how many key lookups he had to do. But here's where it gets most interesting. That sort really didn't stand a chance. That sort only estimated enough memory to sort a few hundred rows. But in actuality, we had to sort a few thousand rows, over 10,000 rows. So he ends up spilling to disk. This is where those bad estimates start to come back to haunt you. So let's get an ex I got a, I got to get a picture of this execution plan. So let's get this guy. Oh, I'm doing the screenshot for the Mac thing here. Let's get this new and then grab you and pull you out over here. And then I'm also going to get Miami actual plan with comments. Now I'm also going to get the picture of the spill. Um, so to do do do, uh, I'm not actually going to get the picture of the spill. I, all I need is the yellow bang. So let's add that. Do, do, do. And then insert into the post. Actual plan. We read plans from right to left, top to bottom to understand what SQL Server did in what order. You can also read from left to right in some cases, and I, I'm just legally required to say that because if I don't, uh, Grant Fritchie and Hugo Cornelis will smother me as I sleep. Uh, so from right to left, Shut up, Grant and, and Hugo. Uh, so one, SQL Server did an index seek on location equals Miami, Florida, and expected only 13 rows to come back. In reality, 600, what was it, 25? 625, yeah, 625 rows came back. Came back. So we also had to do 625 key lookups. And then we had to do 625 index seeks on comments user ID because each person has their own set of comments. Um, in total, we found 14,176 comments left by people in Miami. So that poor sort operator never stood a chance. He has a yellow bang because he ended up spilling to disk. Um, so, okay, perfect. Um, now, let's see, paste that in down here. So really now, seriously, what do we do? Whoops. What do we do about Miami's back uh, Now, okay, so now I've, I've got that all set up. Let me go do the set the featured image and let's stop and talk for a second because I've got, this is about 524 words in the blog post. So let's stop and uh, talk for a second as human beings. 
Because now I've come to a fork in the road about what am I going to tell people inside this blog post. So now I've kind of opened up their eyes to, look, you have stats, you have an index, you can do recompile, you can do updating statistics. None of those are going to fix this problem. When you're up against this problem, what are your choices? I always want to lead people with uh, what you would want to go and learn next. Because with really all of my blog posts, I aim to start opening up a, a whole new world. You know, I'm trying to open up people's doors and get them to understand or ask new questions that they weren't aware of that were even a problem before. Because I kind of think of myself as Breno's our destroyer of dreams. People go, oh, surely SQL Server is going to take care of this for me. And part of my job is to demystify that and go, no, he can't. There's nothing that he can do. Um, so now this becomes, where do I want to send the viewer next? When someone's reading this blog post, where do I want to send them next? Um, and I don't know the answer to that. I don't know where I want to send them next. Um, I don't really want to send them on a training class journey because I don't think that I have a good appropriate next step for this. Um, I, part of me says if I was if I was facing this problem in real life, what might I, if this was the biggest problem that I had? What might I want to do? Let me think about that for a second. Send them to Clippy. Yeah, right. Where's Clippy? What's the deal? Um, oh, okay, okay. Mm. Okay, no, 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 I got it. Okay, so in um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give them a list of things to consider because I just realized that I do have a really good module on this, uh, breaking queries up into phases, like dumping the results of one part of the query into a temp table. Um, hell, I even have a blog post about it. Oh, sweet potato, yes. Um, <laughs> So I have a blog post about this, CTE temp tables, CTEs versus temp tables. So what's better, better CTEs or temp tables? And so I'll put this over into the chat just so that you can see them. I don't know, for some reason it's not putting in uh, when I send uh, chats. Let me go, you know what I'll do is I'll go over to Twitch separately. Uh, Twitch. And then it's going to be all inception. Um, what's better, CTEs or temp tables? Uh, to do, 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 paste that in. There we go. That worked beautifully. Um, so um, this is where I'm going to send them to. Uh, do, 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 copy this out. Copy. Uh, temp tables always win. They don't always win. They don't always win. That's an interesting Natalia that they they actually don't always win. Uh, so now, really seriously, what do I do about Brent's estimates? In this example, the query still runs fairly quickly, but if you run into this kind of problem with a larger query, larger spills to disk larger estimate variations than etc and so forth. Here are some techniques you can consider for performance tuning. Breaking the query up into phases, into phases using CTEs, using CTEs or temp tables. I'm going to say using techniques like temp tables, um, so put this in, do, 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 paste. Oops, there we go. Uh, what else would I want to send them towards? Um, uh, query hints like different cardinality estimator versions or optimization hints um, like optimize for asking for a larger grant etc. Um, newer compatibility levels with tricks like adaptive joins. I'm going to throw that in just to see. I don't think, because I think I'm on uh, an older compat level on Stack Overflow 2010. I'm going to throw in 2019 um, just to see if it just so happens to give me an adaptive plan. That would be kind of a, a cute little uh, trick. It does not. Okay, yeah, that's all right. Uh, so let's go back over here. Uh, adaptive joins. 
adaptive memory grants. Um, there we go. So I think um, that's probably a good way to get started. Um, but the big takeaway for me is that 201 buckets in a histogram just isn't enough to portray real world data skew, especially as your data size grows into the millions of rows and beyond. All right, there we go. I am happy with that. Let's ship it. Woo! So that is scheduled, and I am off to the races. That's actually better than I thought I was going to do in terms of time. Oh, okay, so I think I've got everything inside there. I didn't have any fixes left I needed to do. We're at 639 rows. I'm happy with that. Uh, just to get a quick calendar out there on what this week's blog post look, calendar looks like then. So Monday, I have the announcement for the updated first responder kit. Tuesday, now I have the 201 buckets problem part one. Uh, Wednesday, I have the uh, 201 buckets problem part two. And then Thursday, depending on if I can get this done in time, I may do SP Send startup mail. I'm going to try to do it as a an Azure Data Studio notebook. Let me make sure I got my title right on here. Okay, perfect. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to do the uh, SP Send startup mail as an Azure Data Notebook because there are those interactive steps of how many uh, mail profiles do you have, how many operators do you have, and so forth. And I kind of want to make people step through a script in order to figure that out. And an Azure Data Studio Notebook is probably the best way to achieve that. All right, there we go. Well, that's everything I wanted to accomplish this morning. This week's blog post uh, queue is all set up. Um, with the except possible exception of Thursday's post, which I may punt till later. Normally, I have I like to pride myself on having two, three, four weeks of blog posts in the in the scheduled queue, um, just because the further out that I that I schedule, the the better I feel in terms of not having to write under pressure. Uh, but it looks like I got some work to do in order to catch up. That's probably a lot of what I'm going to be doing this week on the stream is writing future blog posts. Um, thanks. Glad you liked it, David. Uh, Nadal, Natalia, uh, greetings from Russia. Thanks, everybody. Hope you had a fun uh, couple hours inside there. And I will see you all in the next stream. Now I'm going to go downstairs, go get myself some fresh coffee. And then, man, it's such a nice day outside. Uh, I do think I probably need to get the car washed, actually. Uh, so I will go out and abound. Have fun this week, and I will see you all later. Adios, everybody.